Have you ever thought of fragrances as being spooky season fragrances? Well, I have 20 in different categories to get you in the spooky season scent spirit. Hello, my gorgeous ones. Welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia here on my channel. I love all things affordable fashion, beauty, and fragrance. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, really fun fragrance videos, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. Okay, you guys, I've been so excited to do this video. I have been thinking about it. I'm like, ooh, we're gonna do some spooky season fragrances, scents over here. So I've actually chosen 20 and I have broken them down into categories like witchy scents and vampire scents, ghost scents. Um, potion scents, and then a little a, an outlier as well in here, maybe one or two. So let's go ahead and get into it. This should be super, super fun. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I'm not gonna spend a really long time on notes here. I'm just gonna tell you, like these fragrances give me that feel and they're very appropriate for spooky season. Okay, this first one I've talked about before. This is Serge Lutens. This is the Un Bois Veni. And this one has this, so this one I'm putting in the category of um, actually like dark forest because there's something very kind of deceiving and alluring about this. Like I picture the Hansel and Gretel little cottage, the witch's cottage in there, right? Not that this smells like candy, but it there's something sweet and billowy about it and woody at the same time. So you have this woody vanilla sort of incense-y smell with this. And it's as if I imagine, you know, whatever is billowing from her furnace in her chimney, calling the children to her little cottage that she's gonna eat up. That's what I get out of this. So that's why this one is a dark forest scent. The next one is actually from Latafa. This is a Kashaf. And this one is also in my, so I'm going by categories. We're, we're in the dark forest right now, okay? This one has a very jammy, rich, black currant woody scent to it. So I'm also I'm picturing, you know, Hansel and Gretel or some other little unsuspecting little boy, little girl going into the forest, you know, picking some berries with their basket and they get snatched up by the big bad wolf or something spooky and mysterious. They disappear into the woods. This one is, oh, I love this one so much. I think this is such an underrated Latafa fragrance. I mean, the bottle is gorgeous and it just gives, really, really gives a deep, dark, berry, woody vibe. Okay, this next one is actually by brand I never hear anyone talk about. This is um, for them. It's I individual for them. It's IND period for them. Um, this is forest bathing. And I believe this is specific to Urban Outfitters. I think you can only get this there, but um, I have several of them. And this one in particular leans a little bit more masculine, but I really, really like this. Forest bathing is a name. So imagine this really does smell kind of like a wet, damp, sort of a clean forest vibe, um, like mist off the forest is what I get out of this. It has a little bit of a cold vibe to it too. So it's kind of crisp, cold, damp, a little bit eerie, but very, very beautiful. And this is a perfect unisex, but also for my guys, if you're watching, I really recommend this forest bathing. Okay, now we're going into my ghost scents. And when I thought of ghost scents, I thought more of like a skin scent, like a, is it there? Did it just vanish? You know, just kind of subtle under the radar, just kind of wafting through the room. So I went with Missing Person by Fleur, which is exactly what this is to me. It's a very popular skin scent, um, kind of divided. People either love it or hate it. I really enjoy this. It's soft. It's, it is kind of barely there. If you're entering a room, you have to be a little bit closer. It's kind of a whisper of a scent, you know, like someone just passing by will be like, 
Did I just smell, like, did I just see something? Did I smell something? So that's why it's a ghosty scent to me, but it's very clean, musky, soft, um, little bit warmth of amber in here. Really, really like this one. Now, a little less subtle of a ghosty, musky scent is Musk Essential by um, Adan Fragrances. This is also, I believe, a Latafa brand. I'm pretty sure this is one of their kind of off sister brands. This one this is, I think, supposed to be similar to Initio's Musk Therapy. I've never smelled that one before. A little bit different notes, though. That one has like plum and some fruity notes. This is just a very strong, stark musk scent. So it is a a strong skin scent, not one that, you know, is just wafting through the room. Like this one makes its presence known, but there's not a whole lot else to it. So it's literally feels like a white fragrance, not a white floral, but a white musk fragrance. And it's like a ghost that's not afraid to appear in the room at you, but it's still kind of transparent. There's nothing else. It's just the figure of the ghost, but it's definitely there. That is musk essential. Now my last ghost scent is Define Me's Rami, and it does have these little crystals in here. Which, so this could have probably been a potion one. But the reason why I put it in the ghost is that this one is very different than the last two. This one actually has some fig, black cherry, almond. It's very romantic and very soft. There's something almost mystical about it and almost vintage in a way, but still very pretty and sort of ethereal. So I'm imagining like a, a lost lover ghost has entered the room, like she died um, in her beautiful floral gown, or maybe it was her wedding gown or something, and this was her wedding fragrance. And she's just, haunting the house, making her presence, presence known. known with this beautiful, soft, sort of a mysterious scent that just kind of filters through the room and lingers and makes someone really think and think, you know, was that her? Did I smell something? Something smells beautiful. So that is why this is my last ghosty fragrance. It is Define Me's Rami. Okay, now we're moving on to the elixir, the potion fragrances. This is Demeter's Mystical Blooms. And actually they have a whole line that were supposed to be spooky season fragrances, came out a couple of years ago. They have one called Vampire Blood, Transfixed, um, Witching Hour, I think. And honestly, none of them smelled very <laughs> spooky to me, but this one, Mystical Blooms, does have that sort of, this could also maybe be put in like a like a poison garden, like a very a dangerous flower. That is kind of, I guess, why it goes into the potion, right? This has this sort of dark floral scent that is mysterious and kind of smells like it might be something a little bit dangerous, if like a nightshade or something. If you were to ingest it, you would die. But it's still really pretty at the same time and mysterious. It is, you know, mystical blooms. So it's like it's calling you over and you really want to smell it and you keep smelling it because it smells so good, but maybe you shouldn't be. You get the vibes? That is why I named this. And this is really, really inexpensive. I do actually really like this um, fragrance a lot, even on. And it's like $12, $14 on Fragrance X. Doesn't last a whole long time, but you get a big bottle, so I don't mind. Okay, the next one I had to put, obviously, in elixir and, um, you know, potion is Poison Cherry by Bella Butte Bar. I reviewed this a while back along with the palette. So this is an indie brand, makeup brand, that came out with the fragrance. This is a Tom Ford Lost Cherry dupe, but I wanted to include it because the bottle i mean the bottle has you know the poison cherries it is called poison cherry after all so it's like almost if you you know take a little sip of you know like a cherry elixir and it's going to put you into you know a trance or um you know be poisoned obviously so this is a beautiful take on the tom ford lost cherry a little little bit of woodiness to it um a little bit of incense in the cherry liqueur, it definitely smells like something that you shouldn't be drinking, but it smells so good. You take a sip and then. All right, my next potion one is Indigo by Nest. Now, this is one of my favorite tea fragrances. I love it so, 
so very much. And you have some bright bergamot in here. This one to me is, would be like a tea that just puts you to sleep. So it's like, you know, a lady that wants to murder her husband or, sh or you know, um, a witch that wants to put her victims into a, a trance to go to sleep and to dream. That is what this gives me. It is a very calming and relaxing fragrance. It also has some of those herbal elements from the tea that just kind of give me the feeling of, you know, like a witch that went and picked all of her herbs, you know, in her, her garden or in the woods or whatever, and, and conjured up this, this beautiful tea fragrance that um, is going to make you dead. Okay, let's move on to some witchy fragrances. So I chose the Talia Ferro um, brand, and this one is called Tonight. And this one has a very strong, sort of classic churchy incense vibe to it. Um, there's something very mysterious about this. It definitely gives me some witchy vibes. Um, it kind of gives me almost like headshot vibes as well. Like we don't, I don't mean like cannabis. I just mean like incense, you know, sort of vibes. Like if Bob Marley was playing in the background or something, that's what this gives me. So, you know, I just picture someone who, you know, a witch that's all into all these different, you know, herbs and incenses and has something burning out of her little, her little cottage, her little abode in the woods. This is what I would kind of imagine is like what it would smell like outside of her little house. So that is Tonight by the Talia Ferro. Now this next one is Rebecca Minkoff. And this is just Rebecca Minkoff by Rebecca Minkoff. By the way, she is now um, crazy, a real housewife of New York, a friend of on the show on Bravo. If you know, you know, if you don't, whatever. But this fragrance is a really pretty woody leathery suede fragrance that is very feminine, but I also feel like a man could wear this too. So this could be a witchy man or a witchy woman. There's just something very kind of dark, but like beautiful about it. So, so this would be like my lovely like Salem witch who was you know, 25 years old and was like the beauty of the village, but she has been deemed a witch. This is what she would smell like luring the men in. Very, very beautiful, kind of dark, woody, leathery, but still feminine in a way. My next witchy one is Salt and Stone, Centaur and Vetiver. And that's basically what this is. This is, you know, I really like this because a lot of Santal fragrances smell exactly the same to me. And this definitely has a, a strong Santal vibe, but that vetiver also cuts into here. So, so this to me is rainy witch vibes. This is chill, calm, not a storm, but like drizzly, witchy, rainy vibes here. When I think Santala, I always just think gray. When I smell it, it's just, it's a gray fragrance to me. It's a moody fragrance, a, it's raining fragrance. And I'm just picturing a witch just taking her time, stirring in her cauldron, and it's raining outside. That is sand, uh, salt and stone, santal and vetiver. And my last witchy fragrance is going, excuse me, is going to be Intense Cafe by Montal. Whoa, okay, just <laughs> the witch got excited. Um, okay, so a lot of people know this fragrance. It is a very musky, strong, beasty coffee fragrance. And you also have rose in here as well. So I love this one. This is really kind of what I picture the head witch, head witch in charge. That is what she is wearing. She's got her little gaggle of witches. This is maybe what even Winnie from Hocus Pocus is wearing. Like she's the head B, the head W. She's gonna step in in this fills a room. I just, I don't know, I love this one. It's very confident, but there's also something very commanding and, and magical about this as well. All right, now I'm moving on to my vampire scents. <sighs> okay, we have Vani de Mexico. This is by Dua, and I think this is one of their original blends. 
This is kind of like old church Mexico, like cathedral type of fragrance. So you do have Mexican vanilla specifically in this. I think a few other vanillas and you have some incense, some patchouli in the base. So you guys know normally patchouli and I, but something about this one, the way that it's mixed, I don't mind it. This is very dark. This is like, you need like your cross and your holy water, like, you know, maybe this is even like an exorcism fragrance, but I'm just thinking vampire. I'm thinking the vampire cannot cross, cannot come into the church. Like the incense is burning. I really like this one. It's definitely a cold weather fragrance. It's very, very moody. Next we have okay. Roberto Cavalli and this is Nero Absoluto. This is a fragrance that I am still figuring out if I like this or not. I am specifically waiting to wear this when it's very, very, very cold, like a nighttime cold. This, this feels like you're in the woods. This is a dark, dark fragrance. Like a, I think there's like black orchid in here. Maybe it, it has this like wood paneling sort of vibe to it. Like I'm picturing an old organ is playing, you know, and, and you're like vampires like, <laughs> that is what I get out of this. It may sound very, very strange. If you smelled it, you would know what I'm talking about. It, best I can say with this, it's one of my darkest smelling fragrances but there's something very kind of like sexy and mysterious about it as well. I just know it has to be the right temperature, right environment for me to truly test this out. And yeah, I definitely think like Mr. Um, Nosferatu would be like, yeah, I'm wearing this. Okay, this actually inspired this video really, and I've been wanting to do this forever because of this fragrance. This is House of Eight by Sniff. And when I first got this, I did a little review on TikTok and I said, this is what a vampire would wear. And then I thought, ooh, I'm gonna save that for next, you know, spooky season and I'll do like a whole thing. This is chocolatey, woody, clary sage. So it has these kind of aromatics, the woodiness, a very dark chocolate and lavender in here as well. I love this fragrance. It is probably not for everyone. It's definitely Sniff's most kind of avant-garde niche type of fragrance, I think. Probably also their most masculine one, but the chocolate in here is done so well. It's not sweet. It's like a bitter, you know, kind of dark chocolate. Mm, those aromatics and the woodiness. It's so sexy. It is so like mysterious and alluring. Like, yes, Mr. Vampire, you can go ahead, convert me, turn me if you're wearing this or, you know, I'll wear it and I will convert someone. <sighs> okay, guys, I promise I'm not going to do that anymore. I've done it too many times. The vampire teeth, we're done with that. Okay, this next one is um, Mono Theme. This is Black Label Saffron. This is ultimately a very strong woody saffron fragrance. The saffron is very, very strong in here. So it has this exotic spiciness and woods. And this was very inexpensive on FragranceNet. I bought the lime one as well. It's also very, very good. I think they center more on, there are other notes, but it's like, this is a saffron fragrance. This is a lime fragrance. This is a rose fragrance, you know, and the, the rest of the notes are just supporting players to it. But this is, it is exotic. This is your exotic vampire. This is a vampire that, you know, is, is from a far off land. And saffron I always feel like is very, very sexy and it, it draws me in. So if you're wearing some saffron, I might let you bite. Okay, I think I said this about this fragrance in another video too, that this would also be a vampire fragrance kind of for me. This is Narciso, Narciso Rodriguez's Rouge. And I love this. I have such a weird relationship with this fragrance because it's so weird and kind of like, it is a very strong musky fragrance. Um, and with a little bit of rose in here, it is so sexy, but it's also kind of abrasive. It really, really is. Like this is, this is vampires not creep around the corner. Vampire just straight up says, I want to suck your blood. Like, ah, I'm here. I'm here to kill you. This is a femme fatale fragrance. This, if I put this in another category, it'd probably just be like all out 
slasher murder, like, or like, or femme fatale, you know, I guess like a woman who traps her victims and like squeezes them to death with her legs. That's what I get from this. I love this fragrance so much. You guys, like the more I smell it and wear it, the more addictive it is to me, but it's definitely probably not for everyone, but I also think this is a best in cooler weather. So I'm so excited to wear this one. Okay, this next category is funky. This is my outlier. It's just Freddy Krueger. That's it. There's two fragrances, Freddy Krueger. Okay, <laughs> this is Char. You get it? Char. He's charred. Okay. The next one makes more sense than this one, actually, but I threw this one in here. This is by Henry James. It's a clean fragrance um, house, and I really, really like this one. The more that I wear it, I like it. It's basically a woody, aromatic, Haitian vetiver um, fragrance, so it does have this little bit of charred element to it. It doesn't really smell like a fire and smoke. It specifically smells like something's just slightly woody and, and charred, you know, with some, some aromatics billowing around it. So I kind of just played on the charred thing for this, but my last one I think is, is what really made me want to do the Freddy Krueger, um, category, but this is Alt Fragrances Fireside Marshmallow. And I thought of Freddy Krueger because this one does smell like a burning fire. Like so realistically, something is burning, but then there's that sweetness of this marshmallow that's kind of fluffy in the background of this. And it's kind of dreamlike. Like when I, when I wear this, I feel cozy. I feel safe. I feel kind of dreamy but you know you're not safe because Freddy Krueger is one, two, three, he's coming for, you know, the, he's coming for you, okay, basically. And so it's, yeah, it's like the charred part, he's charred and the marshmallows, the dreamy kind of fluff and like he's, he's gonna, he's gonna get ya. So that's why I put this in and made up a whole Freddy Krueger random category, but that is it, you guys. I had so much fun with this. Like this is just, this is everything to me because I love spooky season. You put fragrance together. I'm a happy, happy girl. You guys let me know some of your favorites that would go into these categories. Let me know how you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping, and smelling spooky fabulous. Bye.